Slap Shop is great. It's fast, it's efficient, and it allows you to get your army ready for battle. Maybe you are happy this way. But maybe, I said maybe, your Slap Shop model doesn't look as good as you wish it would. Well, there is a big mistake that pretty much everyone is making that makes your mini look like graffiti art painted after a caffeine overdose. And this mistake doesn't allow you to unlock the full potential of this technique. So let's fix Slap Chop. In the original Earth Shattering Honest Word Gamers video, I can clearly see his model looks pretty good. And can you spot why that is? If you don't though, you'll know soon enough. Don't worry. But before I reveal this, I'm gonna tell you about two things very important for you to get ready to use this technique at its full potential. This first thing is something that every miniature painter should do regardless of the technique you want to use. But who am I kidding? I'm gonna skip this step as much as I possibly can. But really, sometimes we gotta be really careful with this because it can ruin the effect we want to achieve. See it like this. The more time is invested in this, the better results you have on your mini. I'm of course talking about prepping your model. Since we're gonna use dry brush to build up volumes on our model, you kinda have to get rid of anything that can interfere with that. So mold lines are gonna catch the dry brush like edges and they're gonna be way more visible than if you were painting in other techniques. And same for gaps. Edges and gaps will catch the dry brush and be more noticeable. A big no-no. Clean that shit up. Second thing you want to really pay attention to is another thing that usually I would just skip. Painting with other techniques, we can leave some part of the miniature look black. Here you can't always do that because there are gonna be part of the model that gets in the way of our dry brushing stuff. Remember we are trying to use the biggest brush we can swing for dry brushing our miniature. And that's why we're gonna need to sub-assemble, yay! As you can see here, I keep the gun and arms detached from the body. This allowed me not just to fit my brush in there, but also to clean more comfortable the mold lines and stuff. To temporarily fix the arms, I used paddocks. Uh, check the description and you'll find some useful links for other videos related to this topic. And here I recommend being better safe than sub Sorry, because on this other model I didn't subassemble and I kind of regretted it because the arm did get in the way at the end so but hey you live and learn right remember to sign up to my newsletter to improve your painting with a three minutes read per week so now your model is prepped and ready for slap chop right prime black gray dry brush white dry brush and slapping on some contrast paint right and you get this amazing results right e not really and okay, it's totally fine if you like it this way. Your miniature is painted and it's gonna look acceptable from a distance. If you only were aiming for an acceptable look, you would not invest time into the two dry brush stage, would you? Just admit that you want more. Before you snap my head off in the comments, let me explain. The aim of the slap chalk technique is what's in art called grayscale, and then tinting the surface with inks and pigments. It's pretty much the same thing as using a zenithal priming, which I already spoken of. But instead of creating volumes and depths and interests with an airbrush or a can, you create it with a dry brush that's faster and more convenient. But there's two big problems with this. Number one is, in my humble opinion, you're creating the illusion of a gradient. Most of the times, the gray step up beneath the white isn't really gonna shoot through. Thus, it's not worth the extra step. But I bet you don't believe me, so let's test it, shall we? Let's start with the, the regular two layers dry brushed mini. Then I'll add the other one for the white steps. For all the slack chopping on this video, I used this neutral gray from AK and this off-white also from AK called Grimmy Gray or something. Using a super powerful white in this case, it's a big waste for the same reason why this middle stage is pretty useless. Let's move on to the next stage and see why. I can pretty much already tell they will look the same because of how the pigment will interact with the surface using the dry brush technique. Since we are using so little paint on the brush, we won't be able to achieve full saturation of the color, aka they won't be as powerful, aka they'll both look grayish. Feel free to do this step, but for me, these look pretty much the same. So no. 
no difference. At least it isn't enough difference for me. This is my opinion. This is my video. This is all about me, 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 me. But let's not kid ourselves. That's not even remotely the worst part of this. The real wasted effort lies somewhere else. And as I was researching for this video, I looked up many other creators' uh, videos on Slapchop and I saw pretty much all of them committing this mistake. And I'm really hoping I'm not the only one that's realizing this and I hope for you guys it makes sense as well. The problem is the same exact problem I talked about in the Zental Priming video, maybe. I, it was a long time ago, I don't really remember. Let's go back to that first clip I show you of the Honest War Gamer. So why does this look good? Problem lies with how the black primed miniature or the black surface interacts with the contrast paint. Even the more pigmented one have no chance against black. They aren't remotely strong enough to cover a black base coated surface. And I think that's just pretty much a fact. If it does stain a little bit the surface, it looks off anyway because it's gonna be way too dark. Because what you're using is a transparent paint that's meant to be used on lighter surface. Rob's miniature at the start of his video looks so good because he, differently from other creators, has a pretty heavy application of ray. So he has way less black area for his transparent paint to struggle with. Still, in the model, he actually demonstrated the technique on he does recommend to his viewers to avoid certain part of the model. And that model kind of looks different from the model from the start, in my opinion. It's a small thing, but how it has been perceived as a technique kind of got through the message that you have to leave some areas black. And that, for me, doesn't work. Having dark recesses can really be good. In this case, these dark recesses can really just be created by the contrast paint itself. And that's even more accurately if you want to nitpick, because even in display painting, when we are reset shading some part of the model, we're gonna rarely use black. We're gonna use a darker version of the color that we used for that particular surface. So the model looks shit because the black areas stay, well, black. <laughs> That's why the model kind of looks off and weird, especially if you jump from a vibrant green to black. That's just jarring. And this jump in tone will make our eyes feel like it's a day after a keg party at a frat house. Not good. So what? You don't use Slapchop? Is that it? Of course we are. There is actually a very simple middle ground in order to use this technique at its full potential. And I really think it's a really good technique that's way better than using an airbrush because it's way more accessible and way more people should do it. It's just this little thing is not mentioned and it, I think it affects a lot the result people are getting. I really think that this little change can really impact how people, how people feel about their painting. The simple solution is to work directly on the gray primer or base coat. This will create very subtle shadows without totally sucking the life and saturation from the vibrant colors you apply. So here I generously applied contrast paint. These are flat surfaces, so they're not the best for using this paint, but whatever. A sure thing is that every paint is different. For example, the yellow is very cool and better quality of paint allows for a more free application. It's also fair to mention that not every color sucks this badly using the original Slapchop. With darker colors like this green teal, whatever, the result is pretty acceptable, but still, I wouldn't recommend it. So what are my conclusions? I think the result speaks for themselves. These warmer colors on the black will pull your eyes out like the Inquisition did with the heretics. The dark blue and green look fine, but still, meh, to be honest. So for me, it's only worth changing slightly in order to have more subtle shadows, but still a coherent result. My question is, can this be improved? We'll see. Maybe you better subscribe for that, okay? Let me just remind you that if you're really in a hurry, you can just slap some lighter color primer and slap your contrast paints without any particular highlight or volume or blah blah blah. I did it in this video here, painting a whole army of Tyranids in less than 24 hours. So just use that technique if you're really in a hurry. So now you have full access to a new way of slap chopping 
Getting your armies done fast, but still maintaining a good look. But there's another mistake you might not know you're making. That's destroying every chance of you getting the looks that you want on your miniatures. And if you don't solve this problem, you won't be able to slap chop in any way. The mistake I'm talking about is how you use your dry brush. But don't worry, because here's the video that will forge you into a master of dry brush.